All right, so we have now added our IO. What we need to do now is kind of understand what our IO does, right? So our IO down here is basically what we're doing here is we're tying in physical devices that we have in our system to our actual program that we will be doing and logically programming to make something happen in the real world, right? So this is a software that we're gonna use to interact with real world devices to go input, output, and control physical devices. In our case, we have a processor in slot zero that is talking to, again, our rack. Our rack, and then, so this is, a, think of this as your, your CPU of your actual computer or laptop that you're using right now. Now, the second thing is your ethernet card. The ethernet card is a, the in slot two, and in slot two, think of this as your ethernet to your actual, or your Wi-Fi to your actual laptop. This is your communication that you will be communicating to devices that are not attached to your actual rack, but are attached to something that you would like to actually control, right? So again, this comes back to having uh, either remote IO or devices such as, again, what we have here is a PowerFlex drive, right? So then we have in our next slots, we have our inputs, and then we have our outputs, and then we have our analogs. So now what we need to do is take this and actually download it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to communication tab. We're going to go to who active because that is exactly what you should do. Naturally, you definitely should never go and click the download button unless you know specifically that that's all you have to communicate to, because generally speaking in the real world, you're not going to just have one communication path directly to a one processor. That's it. Uh, you're going to have multiple things in multiple areas, so you need to select exactly where you're doing this to, right? So make sure you're specific. In our case, this is why we made our driver. We made our driver so that you know batching station Ethernet is where we are communicating, right? Now we're coming back to our Ethernet card. Again, communicating back to our processor rack. This opens up the back plane of the actual 1756 our communication and then now we're going to select the zero slot which is our processor our 1756 l73 and we're going to click download now you do need to have your processor flashed to the version that you are currently going to so we already have our processor if you want to look we already have our processor is actually version 32 already so in this case we already have our processor at that version so we're completely fine but if you did not have your processor in the correct version you will need to change your processor uh, or your actual software package to match your processor in my case or in any case if you are if that's the only software you have you need to flash the fir firmware of the specific processor to match what you have in our case, we match perfectly. We have version 32 software. We have version 32 flash to our processor that we're using. So we're gonna click download. We have no logic whatsoever in this program right now, but what we are doing is we're verifying that our IO that we set in, in our last video, if you haven't seen that one, go back and watch that one. We are setting our IO to make sure that it works. <clears throat> now, if it does not work, or if it has a problem, it will in then turn show just like this the device right here, this Ethernet device was showing a uh, in a caution symbol. Now the caution symbol is gonna tell you that it's not communicating right. You don't have it set up properly. So if you don't have something set up properly, you can come over here and click right here, raise the bottom bar and see the status of it. Status right here, status right here. See this says the PowerFlex status right here. Now, if by chance I stop communicating to my PowerFlex drive, if I unplug it right now, I unplug my PowerFlex drive, you can see it is shutting down. So the connection status is not there, and that is what you will see. You will see a little caution symbol in the actual IO tree, and that will show you that it's not connected. In my case, I'll plug it back in real quick. 
it will start connecting and then the connection will come back valid. This is what you will see if you have a connection problem or if you don't have it configured properly, it will let you know that as well. What we have done is I've showed you how to properly configure things so we do not have that problem on this specific program right now. So now that we kind of understand our IO, um, this is one thing I want to, to, to highlight and let you understand because a lot of people may or may not know this but when it comes down to your real world IO or anything in your IO tree, that is a global tag, meaning that is a controller scope tag. In control logics, you have two types of tags. Structures, you have program scope tags that you can make and use as your program level, which you can see right here, your program tags, local tags, or which cannot be used in, uh, in the outside of the actual uh, task that you're, that you're using them in, but you um, also have your control level. All right, so your controller level is going to be anything that you can use anywhere inside of the program whatsoever. It's also the easiest thing to communicate to your HMIs and stuff of that nature. So when you're understanding the way the controller or the control logics and tags and stuff like that work, the controller tags are the easiest to communicate to but they're also something that your IO tree, everything that's in your IO tree is going to be associated with. Why? Because the simple fact of these are the items that need to communicate to everything in your whole program, right? So if I have multiple uh, instances of a program, for instance, then I, I wanna have different uh, tags and stuff like that. And I'll show you programs and stuff like that to actually pop that up. Um, as a matter of fact, we can type in, uh, uh, let's say, YouTube. <clears throat> let's do, open up the 30-day YouTube project, and I'll actually show you this example that I'm talking about right now so you can actually understand the difference in tag structures, right? So tag structures are very important to understand. So when it comes down to it, we will define through this, and you will get a deeper understanding when we start using this in your HMI systems and stuff like that. But see, in this this program is pretty big, right? So I have a lot more added to this. I have servos, I have servo stuff. I have program levels, multiple program levels, uh, multiple areas, I have tag levels. See, these are all the tags associated with this specific uh, program level. <clears throat> and this these are tags associated with this program level. These are tags associated with the whole program altogether. So anything I want to use globally through the whole program, this is the IO tree right here. This is part of it. Um, <clears throat> then you can see that. You can also segment by data type as well. So you can come in here and segment, you know, come over here and like do ascending, descending and stuff like that. You can you can hide and sort these columns by different things so you can see right here you can easily sort the column and see exactly what you have right there so i just wanted to kind of break that down and show you that real quick again this is a, a higher level um, i just wanted to show you the difference between the two right so it's very important to understand um, when you're uh, you know setting things up is very detail oriented to understand you can do program level stuff that can be the exact same so you can copy and paste things but the controller level, you cannot do that. You can't have multiple tags name the, multi name the exact same thing. But on the program level, you can have, like if I have three or four different programs, I can have the tags name the exact same thing and they will not conflict because of the simple fact that they're in different program levels. Now, again, the anything in the controller tag level, you cannot have duplicated, right? So <clears throat> with that said, this is where the heart of the IO lives. And we're going to continue on and learn more from this as we go. But right now, I just wanted to give this detailed breakdown of how the system structure works because this will give you a solid understanding of the, the implementation of how things are, are actually working together and how they're fluently you know, talking. And, and when you're getting into programming, you need to understand every single detail. So when you get deep in the pool, you understand exactly how things are functioning so that you are more of a fluent programmer. All right, so with that said, we'll carry on to the very next video.